Welcome to my rehabilitation video blog. Um, I'm just going to do a quick introduction about my patient and um, the patient's complaint. So first of all, his name is Charles Rennie. He's a uni student and he's currently training for a marathon. He's uh, come to me because he's got a, he's got a sudden sharp pain in his Achilles tendon and on the back of his lower leg and is his right leg. Um, he's 19 years old. His date of birth is the 12th of April 2001. I've gone through the medical history, so I've cleared I've cleared that he's got no cancer, high high or low blood pressure, um, or heart conditions, etc. He's on no medication, he's got no injury history. I've cleared the special questions and he's got no family history of diabetes, cancer, high or low blood pressure, uh, osteoporosis, um, stress, anxiety, depression, etc. Um, I'm the f he's he's um I'm the first person he's seen about the injury. Um, the injury happened about a week ago, and he's uh well, a bit of his training history was uh he's been training three times a week. Um, he started on five miles, um, because as he's training for a marathon, he started on five miles, um, and then he's slowly progressed to ten miles in the space of four weeks. So he's increased that intensity quite a bit, um, and the distance in a oh, short space of time in four weeks. So the load's been a lot more on the tendon. Um, he also goes swimming uh, four or seven days a week. So he's doing even more training. Um, the area, there's no sweating on the area, um, but it's difficult to weight bear. He's, find, he's finding it difficult to put weight on the, on the right leg. Um, there's stiffness in the tendon on, uh, he says it, it feels stiff. Um, there's pain. The pain on the movement is a four out of ten on the vascal. Um, and on palpation, it feels tender, and it doesn't hurt too much on palpation. He said it's a, a, about a two out of ten on the vascal. Um, the ags what aggravates it are uh, weight bearing on the right leg. Um, when you touch it, as he said, it was a two out of ten on palpation. Um, so on touch, and uh, initial exercise and movement. Um, so stuff like walking, he said, um, it aggravates it. So any movement on the foot, on that Achilles tendon, it uh, aggravates it aggravates his symptoms. Um, eases, he said that it's just rest and uh, then there's no weight on the leg. Um, so the working diagnosis that I've uh, decided to go for is uh, Achilles ten uh, tendinopathy. Um, this is because... Uh, We've well, as you will see later in the video, that we've cleared. We did a special test. We did a Thompson squeeze test, which is a special test for Achilles rupture. Um, we performed that test, and it became back. It came back negative, which you will see in a second. Um, the Thompson squeeze test is quite uh, reliable, as it has a uh, zero point nine three uh, specificity. Um, so it's quite it's reliable. So once this come back come back so it, when, it, when it comes back of a negative test that is most likely going to be a negative test um so we can pretty much rule that out um and because there's pain on movements and touch uh we've decided to go for um achilles tendinopathy on the working di diagnosis so i'm quickly going to talk about the special test treatment and exercises that are used uh, for the special tests i use the thompson squeeze test uh, so I can rule out the Achilles rupture and I'll talk more about that when I uh, perform the test. Uh, for the treatment, I performed, I'm going to perform a uh, K-tape to the calf and I'll explain, uh, I'll get more into that and why when I apply the tape. Um, the exercises I'm going to give him are a single leg or double raise, a uh, double heel raise isometric hold, a soleus calf raise, and a plantar flexion isometric hold with a resistance band. These exercises are specific to the patient because um, we want to be we want to strengthen the calf muscle and the Achilles tendon um, and the Achilles. So um, so it's more stable and uh, and we these exercises are he's able to perform these exercises because the um, his pain has got has gone down. So um, 
he's uh, able to perform these exercises without, you know, a lot of pain. And now, so now I'll move on to the special test. So I will be performing the Thomas squeeze test. Um, first, we'll have the patient lying in prone with both feet off the end of the bed. I'm um, just going to ask for permission to squeeze the calf. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to be looking for is plantar flexion when we squeeze it. Only, uh, only a slight bit of plantar flexion. We'll start with the uninjured side first and then move on to the injured side. And then look for slight plantar flexion again. So he has plantar flexion, so um, no, pen, no plantar flexion would be a positive test. A positive test is indicative of an Achilles rupture, um, so we can rule that out. Okay, so for my treatment modality, I'm going to be performing, well, we're going to be applying some K-tape to the patient. Um, I'm going to be putting the K-tape on his calf. Um, this is so it can support the Achilles in dorsiflexion. So first of all, we'll um, measure out the length of the tape. So we want to start off to the bottom of the foot to most of his calf. So right there. Then we want to round off the edges as well. Um, also, before I apply the tape, we want to go through some contraindications. Um, so, are you allergic to K-tape? No. Do you have any open wounds or cuts, open cuts in the calf or foot area? No. Okay, so we're all good to go. First we'll start off at the bottom of the foot. And we don't want to put any tension yet on the bottom of the foot. And then we want to slowly apply about 10 to, uh, 15 to 20 percent tension up so not hardly any tension at all then we want to flatten it down with the paper so the glue can stick this part of the calf can stick up so it can just, it just Use your fingers to press it down. We don't want to press down too hard because this is this area is sore for the patient. And then we want to anchor it at the end as well, so with no tension. Okay, it's also important to keep the foot in dorsiflexion as well and then at the end we want to find the most painful area on the tendon of the patient so i'll find that would you say there's the most painful spot yeah okay so there so we want to keep that there and then we want to use a small bit of tape to cross it over as well we want to round off these edges as well Break it in half and then apply a stretch to the so is it this bit, this part? Yeah. Okay, so apply it straight over that, spreading it, and then applying a 
each side at the end with no stretch. And then use the paper again to go over it. And then it is all complete. So for my first exercise, I will be getting the patient to perform an isometric plantar flexion hold using a resistance band. Um, we'll get the patient to perform this uh, for about the hold for about 10 to 15 seconds with 30 seconds rest, um, repeating this three times. So I'm just going to get the patient to take the resistance band and then wrap it around his foot, the top of his foot. You can do this sitting on the floor or on the end of the bed. Um, only keep his toes to the ceiling at first and then slowly point your toes down and then hold for 10 to 15 seconds. What this exercise will be doing is strengthening his calf muscles and also his Achilles. So after holding it for 10 to 15 seconds, slowly release down to, to point the toes to the, your toes to the sky and then 30 seconds rest and then repeat it three times. For my second exercise, I'm going to be performing a heel raise isometric hold. So first I'm going to get the patient to face the wall and put two hands on the wall. So this is so he can be supported. Um, I want to keep his body straight, so no bending in the knees or glutes. So uh, first we'll get him to slowly raise up onto his heels, onto his toes, for about 10 to 15 seconds, keeping everything straight so the weight doesn't go into his glutes. Um, we want them to go into the calves. Um, hold this for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then uh, about 30 seconds rest, repeated three times. Um, and then what he wants to make sure as well with his feet is to spread the weight between his pinky and big toe. So this is so he doesn't lean onto one side too much. For my third exercise, I'll be getting the patient to perform a soleus calf raise. So first of all, we'll keep the we'll have the patient in a seated position like so, and then be able to get a small elevated surface um, for the patient to put his foot on. So he wants to put the like, like the top third of the foot onto the elevated surface. Um, so first of all, if they can, um, you want to start with the heel below the elevated surface. It doesn't matter how much below, but if they can touch the floor, then that's perfect. Um, and then we want them to slowly raise up as high as they can and then back down again. They want to do this about eight to 10 reps with 30 seconds rest. Um, with three sets and if um, if they feel comfortable after doing that they can then next time they do it they can add a little bit of weight so for example we've got a plate here where they can put on their fire and we'll just add that added weight um, that added resistance or if they don't have any like, a weighted plate at home then they can put like a something that's a little bit heavy that's small that they can put on their fire and then they can also hold on to that and lean forward so if you can like, hold on to it and then lean forward to add that added resistance so it's a tiny bit harder for the patient this exercise will be strengthening his calf muscles and will be strengthening his Achilles as well so now I'm just going to quickly summarize on how I thought the session went um, so I thought it went well the patient was able to perform the exercises that I gave him um, and they didn't aggravate any symptoms, which was good. Also, I thought the treatment went well because the pa I got the patient to walk around on it after and he felt that it was helping him. Um, the positives in the session was, I'd say, the exercises were specific to the person or to, uh, for the patient's um, injury. Um, as you'll see, the uh, exercises were to help uh, strengthen the calves calf muscles and to strengthen their kidneys. Also the exercises were easy to do at home and they they were easy to make like more difficult uh, variations of it with adding weight um, to the exercises. So for, fu for future weeks. Uh, weaknesses, I would say that I could have used easier language uh, for the patient when I was um, delivering the exercises or for the treatment. Um, for example, um, I, I was saying plantar flexion and dorsiflexion a lot, 
not all the time, but I did a couple of times you say the word plantar flexion to the patient and they wouldn't necessarily know what plantar flexion means. So I could have said point to point your toes to the sky or point your toes down to the ground um, more often. I did at some points, but I could have been more uh, more consistent with it. What, what I'll do next was, um, what I would do next is uh, if the patient is ready, I would apply a head, like more load onto the exercises um, or maybe even more reps and sets. But first of all, I'd increase the load if, if the patient is ready to do that. Um, I could also apply more treatment modalities. Uh, for example, I could do some mobilization or some soft tissue uh, or I could do a soft tissue massage. But uh, for me to do that, the patient said that there was a, a little, a tiny little, a little, a tiny pain, um, a tiny bit of pain on palpation on the on the uh, tendon itself. So I wouldn't do the soft tissue massage yet, but maybe in future weeks when the pain has uh, settled down and there's no more pain on touch. So um, that would be the only time I'd apply the soft tissue uh, massage. But that would be. Something I'll be thinking about in the up and coming weeks when the pain dies down. Um, so yeah, I think that's all what I'll do next uh, for now. Um, so I think that summarises um, the video blog. So uh, thank you for watching.